Writers Federation. Join us now for a fast-paced competition of professional wrestling, featuring the top stars from the world. At this point, should have been somewhere around 35 to 40 minutes wrestling. He's a very defensive wrestler, but like I say, he's rushing his style a little bit, and he had me going pretty good. He wants to win very badly because now he's the one that's got to beat me for my title. It's not like wrestling him for the world title because he is world champion no longer. Harley Race has that title, and he's in a hurry to get it. He's making a few mistakes, as you can see here. He had me going. We were both sweating profusely. Uh, he was real slick. He was hard to get a hold of because we'd wrestled so long. So here you see I almost got him in a sunset flip, and he's trying to fight out of it now. I'm trying to muscle him back down and get the count, and he's trying his best to reach that rope and get it, but he got off balance here. And you're going to see I get a near fall right here. I finally got him on his back and almost got the three count right here, but he kicked out. Very close. Very close, close count. It was a very close count. It was a near fall. I almost had it, but, you know, I was just kind of laying back and playing his game because in this match, I was a champion. I was a Southeastern champion. He was after my best. So, you know, I, I have to apologize for some of the things I did because, you know, you got the Jackson jaw sometime. You can take just so much, and you're going to have to fight fire with fire. And he did some things unbecoming of a champion, so I did them right back to him. I was doing them to others. I was letting him do it first, but I wasn't the last one going to be hurt, I can tell you that. He got really rough here. Like I said, we were both sweating like the devil. He's got a super chop here. He likes to took my head off with that, put me right on the flat of my back. Is he still in good condition, Bob? He's in super condition. I could tell that. I could still feel the power and the strength. After 40 minutes of wrestling, he felt just like he did when we started, only he was perspiring heavily, just like I was. Well, what you do is you only send him off someplace else to fight another victim that he might be able to wrestle with. Race. That's right. He's going to have to go somewhere else. He came here to get my title, put him in the driver's seat to wrestle race, and he didn't get my title. So he's got to go somewhere else now. Right there, you can see he almost had me beat. It was a tough battle up and down, but, you know, I'd get to feeling bad and had the wind took out of me, I'd hear somebody on that front row say, come on, Bob, and by God, I'm going to do it for them and me too. Now, right here, I didn't know which way he was going. I felt like I was on Mars somewhere, and when he dropped me, I wished I was on Mars because it took all the air out of me. None of this falling. It must have been about eight or nine feet coming down, hit that map up very hard. This is one of his favorite maneuvers, too. He's beat a lot of... Uh, exactly right. Here you see he went for that famous figure four lead lock, and I hooked him right there, one, two, three, and that was it. And the nature boy, Ric Flair, had to go elsewhere. He didn't get the Southeastern title. He'll have to go somewhere, get somebody else's title so he can meet Harley Race. I was real happy about it. I want to thank everybody that backed me up. It was probably one of the most important matches of my professional career. I'm still the champion, and I'm going to do my dead level best to remain the champion. Okay. Bullet power. All right. All right. We're going to get you to come out a little bit later on and take a look at some film uh, involving the Midnight Express. If you can come back out and do it. my pleasure, Charlie. All right. A lot of action coming your way in the next hour. And, uh, you know, taking a look at uh, that move that, uh, coming out of that figure four. It, uh, it seems that Bullet Bob and everyone who uh, has been around professional wrestling knows a lot of Flair's moves. I think the old Bullet had that one uh, in store for Mr. I'd Flair say, when he went for that figure four. So it was too. a great count. I've never seen that before. It happened once before in Miami when I think uh, Terry Funk defeated Jack Briscoe in Miami. Same maneuver. I'll exactly tell you what, uh, Bullet Bob uh, had it in for uh, Mr. Flair and a great win for Bob. Let's go to the ring right now. Our first match in the ring. Uh, introducing uh, from Marietta, Georgia, the Southeastern Tag Team Champions, the Armstrong Brothers, Brad and Scott. And their opponents today, from the state of Georgia, Ted Allen. His partner from Australia, Sir Norman Frederick Charles III. Tag Team action here today, Charlie, and uh, a lot of experience in the ring and a lot of youthfulness. All right, here we go with Brad Armstrong and... Ted Allen. Allen's very aggressive. Oh, a switch. Nice switch. Takes his man over with that arm. Controls him. Into a scissor and out. You know what we were uh, talking about a moment ago? Uh, Super Olympia. Men like to uh, remind the wrestling fans about uh, an upcoming match in the arena, Dickie, and uh, it will be a non-sanctioned match, meaning, uh, meaning by that that... Uh, very dangerous matches when you have a non sanction uh, Well, no governing body of professional wrestling is uh, putting their seal or approval behind this. Right. Uh, neither the National Wrestling Alliance Southeastern Championship Wrestling or its uh, parent uh, company, International Sports Incorporated, uh, the blindfold match. In this situation that uh, goes back on television a few weeks when Robert Fuller was blinded, 
A lot of uh, bad blood, shall we say, between he and Mr. Olympia. What and you're saying is Olympia came out here and dropped his mat. I put it on. You cannot see through it. It's, it's got double lining in it. So he's actually asking Robert Fuller and his state right at this time, but he cannot see very well, to put this mask on and he's wearing a mask and the rest of should have blindfolded. You're saying that. That's what we have coming up in the arena. So no, Dickie, there's one hole in the mask for the mouth uh, so that uh, breath can be obtained. You can breathe through this one hole in the mask, and that's it. You, you're cut off as far as uh, right. sight is concerned. I know that Scott Armstrong was doing some nice arm drags there. He's in the ring with Norman Frederick Charles III at this particular moment. Well, you can say one thing about the Australians recently winning that that, uh, <laughs> that, that race on, with, with the ship. The uh, former American Cup, is that right. what it was? Right, I understand that he sailed every four or five years, and it's the first time in over 130 years that Australia takes that, that uh, victory back to Australia, and Norman Charles was bragging in the dressing room that his life will change now also, and his ability will change in the ring, too. Okay, that uh, remains to be seen. A good move by Mr. Allen going around uh, to that hammerlock, bringing up, coming up under his man for the play. Good reversal by Scott Armstrong. Elbow into the side and a flying mare. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that hurts. Especially when you least expect it, Charlie. Now, the boy's hurt. He's hurt bad. He better get to that corner and tag out. Well, he's there. Smart thinking by Scott Armstrong. Brad's in. Four arm oh. blow. Side of the head. Brad Armstrong takes Charles in. Good drop kick. Perfect drop kick. Right up in the air, and he has control over his feet and places them where he wants to place them. He can put it in your eye, on your chin, on your shoulder. When you're up that high, and you have those knees bent just slightly, you can control your force. Side headlock by Norman Frederick Charles tags in Ted Allen. Good right connection to the midsection by Allen. Slows up Brad again. Allen making that connection. Now beginning to uh, come to life in offense against Brad Armstrong. Allen takes his man out to center of the ring, right to the uh, right to the chin. High running drop by Ted Allen. Covers his man, uh, not quite enough to put Brad Armstrong out to tag his name with uh, Norman Frederick Charles. Brad scrambles, makes the tag with Scott. Scott comes in. I noticed that one of the iron bars fell from underneath the ring on that backdrop. Uh, referee Larry Brock has the hands full now. All four men in the ring at the same That's time. Loosen up that ring, son. Those ropes are kind of loose, and that one iron bar is laying down. He's calling for an elbow. Oh, and he let him have with a front elbow. I'd have thought it'd been a side elbow. Beautiful drop kick by Scott Armstrong. Allen goes out on the floor. Back drop. Scott right into his man again. Yeah, nice drop kick. That's too beautiful drop kick by like that young man. in that corner, Woody. My goodness. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He's been practicing. <laughs> he has really come a long way. That's the first time I've seen him drop kick. And I will say they're almost perfect. That's uh, perfect enough for a window. You're right. Uh, takes the wind out of Sir Norman Frederick Charles III, and uh, you're winner of the match. Oh. Bob, it must do you proud. feel real good about watching my boys, especially winning. I've taught them that, you know, if you win is not everything, it's how you play the game. But, brother, when you can play the game right and win, too, there's no better feeling. Right. Now, you know, a while ago we saw when I beat Rick Clay, which I'm very proud of. Congratulations, boys. Hey, good win. Very good. Very, very good. I want to kind of show you what happened a little later on. You know, Rick Clay was in kind of cahoots with the Express there, and they had made certain statements that I had statement. No secret. Passage. So I would like to put on film now exactly what they did. Now, the match was over when this happened. I'll show you what kind of guts the Express has got anyway if you'd ask him to roll that film. Here they come. Now, see, this is their favorite pastime, a three-on-one situation. And here's Brother Rick Flair. He's not happy about it either. And you're going to see what happens here. They're going to try to bust me up real good and end up doing just that. This is after that match you had with Flair. That's exactly right. And here they come, the Express and Flair, who seem to form some kind of uh, dastardly partnership, if you'll excuse my expression. And they're doing a job on me, no doubt about it. They want to put me, put me down and hold me down. And that's exactly what they're doing. You can see when I'm going to the top rope now, they're jumping and knocking my brains out. And thank goodness some of my boys were watching. 
and came down. The match was already over. They had no right in the building, uh, in the ringside area for darn sure. And you can see everything's breaking loose. And finally, somebody has to take matters in their own hands. And uh, thank goodness they got them off of me. I'd probably be in the hospital over here today. I feel like I should have been anyway. But you know, there's no saying when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. You got to keep remembering that too. Now, if we can get out of that film, I want to show you what happened a little later. I was out of action. My boys had a match with the Express. And in this film, you're going to see Norvell Austin for the last time because the man's out with a dislocated shoulder. Right. And already they brought in Honky Tonk Ferris. Yeah. I saw him last week in the arenas. He wasn't even supposed to be there. Sneaked out of the crowd, knocked my running lights, crossed them real good. And I want to show you just what happened on this film right here. You can see him ganging up. Now, you can't see, but in the right of your film, they've both got one of my boys over there trying to knock their brains out. And you just have to fight fire with fire, like I say, so I got the outside man. And what this is going to turn into is one of them old-fashioned Irish Donny books, I believe they call it, uh, fighting all day and singing on the ground or whatever you want to say about it, but it ended up in the crowd all over the building. And I'll tell you one thing. I I'm really sick and tired of the expressive ways. We're going to put things to a stop. We're going to go with six-man action. It's been coming. So we're going to go, you know, with all six men instead of a two-on-one or a three-on-one situation. We're going to get all the Armstrongs in one bunch. We're going to get all the Express in one bunch. And we're going to get down and get it done. Somebody's going to get hurt, but we're going to see that we ain't the last ones hurt. At least we hope that's the way it happens. The tough boys, no doubt about it. They got this new man there right away. Norvell Austin's out and right away, honky talk. But like I said before, they're going to call him honky donkey because he's a jackass if I ever saw one, just like the rest of them. This really got out of hand. They were fighting all in the back of the building. So, you know, something's got to come to a, a stop. When things get this out of, out of control, somebody's going to get hurt. I'm hoping it's not one of us. I don't want anybody to think that I'm a, a bad daddy for putting my boys in this situation. But they feel the same way that I do, that we got to put a stop to that. Well, you know, a promoter is a promoter's dream to see something like this because he says, this is put them all in the ring. So you're talking about six-man tag team action coming up. That's exactly right. Armstrong's in the Express. And right today now, because of the new honky-tonk Ferris, Last week, sneaking up. Today, I want him one-on-one, -on -one, Charlie. You get I've challenged him one-on-one, -on -one, and I want to ask my boys right now. Boys, just stay out of the action. See that they stay out of the action. Just let me have him one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm going to jack his jaw. <laughs> okay, that'll be our television main event. Bob Armstrong takes on uh, Honky Tonk Wayne Ferris. Your way this Tuesday night in All six men in the ring at the same time. There will be no disqualification as the Midnight Express Incorporated will face the team of the Armstrongs. Let's hear their comments right now. You know, true to form, the Express went out, and their newest member came from the very depths of the ocean. And we know what lies on the bottom of the ocean. Norvell Austin is gone. They just shelled out the money, and here comes punk rock Wayne Ferris. Pardon me to term an old phrase, skunk rock Wayne Ferris, the man who calls himself Honky Tonk Man. Well, brother, I'm tired of you people using me for a batting practice. You know, you hit me in the head with everything. Came right in in Mobile. Yeah, you were smart. You pulled a good one, no doubt about it. But we just lost a battle, not a war. Now the war is on. All six men at the same time in the ring with a no disqualification. Now we're going to see how good your new man is when it's nose to nose, toes to toes, and ain't no sneaking up in the back and cracking me on the head with something and knocking me doopy. You be there in Mobile Tuesday night. Because when the Armstrongs and the Express meet, brother, Mobile will never be the same because the Mobile Bullet and the boys will be there. Bob Armstrong. <laughs> yeah, Bob Armstrong. Let me tell you about Bob Armstrong. Bob Armstrong, you said one thing. One thing that's true in that whole interview. You said the Express keeps shelling out the butts and the people keep on coming. Well, Daddy, you right. Because I'm going to tell you, as long as we shell out those butts and keep shelling them out, we got a waiting list about as long as your skinny legs. Now, I'm here to tell you, we beat you right in the middle of the ring last week. We're going to beat you right in the middle this week. Ferris has already proved that he can take up the slack. You know Randy Rose, my cousin, can do the same. And I've proven myself not only to the people in the building, to the fans, to the police, to the wrestlers, to the parking lot attendant, and everybody else there. Mobile's my town. That's the town we're coming into for a six-man tour.